usually by the BIS or a bullion bank, that says, no more, you shall not pass, and the market goes lower. It does not go sideways. However, Michael notes that since April, this market has been going sideways since one of those, which says it's not the end of a bull market. Welcome to the Morning Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, where each morning Vince brings you the financial and precious metals news to get you ready for your day. And now, here's Vince. Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey. In today's market rundown, we will look at gold's price potential now that we've broken out. Again, Jackson Hole and World War III, as it were. Uh, But first, let's look at the markets. The dollar is down 18 at 102.22. 10-year yields are 387 on the offered side of unchanged. The S&P 500 is vacillating around unchanged, pretty mellow, 5556. The VIX is 1569, up 88. Gold is 2490, down 16 on the lows of the range overnight. Silver is 2892, down 11 cents, holding relative to gold's weakness. Copper is 418, up almost 3 cents. Gold-silver ratio 86, nowhere. WTI down 54, 76.45. Natural gas 213 and change up over two cents. Bitcoin again married to 58,000, 58,054, 146, down 350 roughly. Ethereum 2500 and change down 37. Platinum plating both weaker by plating down seven, platinum down five, 939, 950 respectively. Grains are. Mixed with soy up five, wheat down five. You don't see it on your screen. And corn up two. All right. So I haven't shown you a chart yet. There's plenty of charts. You'll be able to see those. Um, Tentatively titled, MSA answers the question, how crazy is 3,000 from here? Uh, We're going to break a section of his weekly report down uh, and try and translate some of the gold stuff uh, for you to use. You know we're fans of his work here, and he puts out a report every week on multiple markets, including, not, but not limited to, gold, silver, gold miners, silver miners, and the relationship between all these assets. We're going to touch on gold today because it's it's top of mind for everyone. Also included in his report is uh, TLT, the bond market, which we we read religiously, and the S&P 500 stock market, which we will read when we have a position on. Anyway, all right, so front page, why gold can rise more, greater than $3,000. This is a report we put out this weekend, three points of view pointing higher. I know we have to be careful when everyone starts getting bullish, but the three points of view are Morgan Stanley, which essentially says, 26.50 26.50 is not unreasonable. This market has been very honest. This market has been physically driven, and we think the last $150 will be financially driven. And they cite the things that we have been citing for a long period of time as well, and that is uh, the election, uh, the unrest, and the potential for the Fed easing. MSA, that's a reiteration of things that he was talking about before, and we're going to touch on that a little bit more, uh, essentially, uh, why 3000 isn't crazy. It's actually conservative if you go by uh, last uh, previous gold parallels. And gold fix, we just said 2700 is not a problem, above 2500 and we stick by it. There are measures that we use to come up with that number, uh, but we put them in another post. Uh, retail sales came in on fire, but stocks and silver soared. Uh, that happened on the 15th. And this was uh, our analysis of a policy change in the UK that all but guarantees that central banks will be loaning money against shitty assets to banks to keep them afloat. A version of BTFP, a version of of, uh, uh, white collar welfare, a version of bond socialism. And we stick by it. DEI. No bond is left behind. All right. So that's some of the stories. We actually, we uh, did a write up on Hartnet as well. Hartnet had two posts out last week, uh, charts and why the Fed must cut. We did a walkthrough on that. Okay. Let's move on to the main event here. All right. 
First, uh, Jackson Hole this week. You can read this on your own. I'm just going to tell you how to how to filter out the noise. The only speech that matters this week is Powell. Everyone will speak before him. Powell's speech is the only one the markets will pay attention to. So if the market moves when some other person is speaking, you don't believe it. It's weak hands. You know, be prepared to not be scared from the first four days. Only Friday matters uh, with regards to his uh, to the to the Fed speaker speech. That's all I have to say about Jackson Hall, having having watched it for years. All right, uh, a little preview of what we're going to talk about more at length. Gold above 2,500, MSA's take. This picture here, let me see if it blows up here. Oh, yeah, nice. This picture here is, is a replication of a channel that he's drawn. Now, this is not his momentum channel. It's just a price channel, right? So from here to here, you had a nice little channel. And his implication is that if you want to be at the basic, simple level, breaking this channel should mirror another channel higher which puts us at 3,000. But by no means is that his target. That just is, you know, that's how you eyeball it. I did the same thing and I eyeballed 2,700. Uh, and we're probably both right here. Well, I'll be right first and then he'll be right afterwards. But it could, it could go a lot higher. Not today, not tomorrow. Get ready for the slam down. And he puts some very important points on how the market is behaving going into this rally, this most recent spike. And uh, uh, we happen to agree with him coming, again, approaching it from a different perspective. Uh, we'll, we'll touch on that uh, as we get into it. We'll come back to this, right? We have a lot more to say about it. Politics, geopolitics. You know, I went through all of it. Look at these things here, right? right? Israel conducted, IDF con detected. Israel uh, is going to do more. Hamas is going to attack, uh, look, uh, Biden, Blinken, Iran, China visiting Russia, okay, uh, uh, Russia capturing a village in the Ukraine, the Ukraine attacking Kursk, South Korea, and this is actually, this is actually uh, uh, encouraging. Uh, Belarus putting troops, this is World War Three. Don't tell me it's anything else. They're just keeping it out of the headlines. You keep gold out of the headlines at $2,500. You keep World War out of the headlines. You don't let the press do their job. And you are in World, we're in World War III. This is it. Just because you haven't been rationed yet uh, doesn't mean we're not World War III. And you're being rationed. Raising prices is rationing. Very, very jaded look on this. This is World War fucking III. We're in it. That's it. Nothing cold about this war. All right. Jackson Hole, as I mentioned, you know how to handle that. Here's your data reports, data, what to look for in data terms. And the main event, normally at this point, we'd be in the premium section and I would be cutting off the video, but I'm going to leave this unlocked today for everyone because, well, I think it's kind of timely. Uh, and, uh, Michael's got some good closing uh, of an era type of statement. So uh, we have some words here. We're going to read most of this, maybe an extemporaneous comment, but these are our words. These are not Michael's words. We read his report and we wrote this up this morning. All right. So the unclenched fist, MSA identifies a critical breakout in the 36-month average momentum and the 100-week momentum charts, which occurred in late March. And there's the chart. There's a chart, right? This breakout marks the conclusion of a three-year wide pause in gold's upward momentum, initiating a new phase characterized by accelerated price action. This chart is meant to depict that we have a congestion of resistance in that rectangle in the 2450 area. You know, daily chart, weekly chart, monthly chart, and all those things were broken at the same time, making them more significant, which is something he had alluded to previously. The breakout marks the conclusion of a three-year wide Pause in gold's upper momentum, initiating a new phase characterized by accelerated price action. Now, this is the chart that I had up top. His chart looks like this, right? And then he implies that, well, if you're above here, then you may as well just create a mirror uh, channel for that. And I think that's reasonable, although uh, I think I don't think he believes in that. I just think it's certainly uh, 
uh, a measure. It's a measure, right? I use the same thing uh, in, in my own analysis where I said, you know, this depth equals that height. These are just things to give you perspective. The multi-year parallel uptrend channel, which he faced, which faced resistance around the 2450 level, has now been decisively breached. Okay. Next thing, cap and trade, not how gold bull markets end. Michael emphasizes that the repeated testing of the channel's upper boundary was not typical of gold's peak behavior, which historically involves sharp spikes followed by rapid declines. Anybody who's traded gold forever knows that the long wick above a market is the death now. It's the cap, usually by the BIS or a bullion bank, that says, no more, you shall not pass, and the market goes lower. It does not go sideways. However, Michael notes that since April, this market has been going sideways since one of those, which says it's not the end of a bull market. Gold typically does not have a distribution top, right? If you're, if you're a white golf type of person. All right. The clustering of price action since April was a clear precursor to the recent breakout. This is a repeat of action we identified going back in December of 2023 and called it cap and trade when the BIS was first seen keeping gold in a range. All right. So I'm linking what Michael's doing with what we've what we've done. So this is kind of my way of drawing what he's doing. Right. He's saying since April. This market refused to get above this area, right? And even here, you know, it, it got above it, but even here, there's there's this constant stoppage at 2450 on a weekly basis. It doesn't, it goes higher, but not much higher than this. So there's his, there's his, uh, the expression he uses was uh, held in a fist. That was the expression he used. And he's right. Now we're going to take you to another level, a different level, All right? This chart here, this is the same concept, right? So let's put it this way. See these wicks here? See these lines that I drew? Line, 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 line. Every time this happened in the past, gold would sell off. Why? Because that's the Bank of International Settlement selling. And they're selling and the market's going sideways. And they're selling and the market's going sideways. Selling going sideways. Selling, going sideways, selling sideways, selling sideways, selling sideways. See that? That's cap and trade. Or if you look at Michael's perspective, he looks at this section here and he says, he says, you know what, this market doesn't want to, not allowed to get above 2450. And now it is. Well, actually, it's more like in here, right? So the behavior that he's seeing technically is confirmed by the behavior of market participants over the years, Bank of International Settlements, bullion banks always cap a rally. And they always cap a rally to buy it. And it goes down because the hands that are long are weak. Well, the hands that are long are not weak this time. So same conclusion, different disciplines. I like that. Uh, here we go. The cluster of price actions this April is a clear precursor to the recent breakout. This is a repeat of action we identified going back in December of 2023 and called a cap and trade. All right, I said that. All right. Michael notes this most recent one, this most recent, I'll call it cap and trade, occurs at the top of a cluster of levels, this most recent breakout, I should say, occurs at the top of a cluster of levels going back years. More on that concept in special gold cap and trade model. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's our description of more elaborate of what I just said to you. All right, back to Michael's uh, uh, specific uh, levels. Upside and then some. Utilizing traditional price chart analysis, Michael projects the next significant resistance level for gold to be above 3,000. He eyeballs it. Quoting him, bull trends in gold over the past 50 years have more often been at least eight-fold moves. This one began from a low of 1050. You do the math, right? So that's why he says, the 3,000 is an eyeball chart. With such projections are inherent, while such projections are inherently speculative, this target is supported by the recent momentum breakout. So that chart that I'm showing you, you're like, okay, it's just a chart. But the more significant breakout we don't see, he's not showing us, is that his momentum system, it has broken out. So momentum breaks out, price confirms momentum, and then the market goes which is also what's going on in silver. All right, maybe more than before. 
The analyst further argues that the current monetary environment, coupled with the dynamics and other asset classes, is more volatile and disruptive than at any time in the past five decades. There's evidence to that effect. Quoting him, recognize that the external monetary and other asset class factors that are in play and about to become more so are far more dynamic and upending than at any time in the past 50 years. Okay. More specifically, central banks facing unprecedented economic challenges are likely to engage in extensive monetary easing, which will further support gold ascent. Michael anticipates that. Gold, along with miners and silver, will outperform previous bull markets driven by the intensifying global financial instability. The real question is, what is 8 times 1050? I'm not going to say the number. You could say the number. But that's it. That's what he's saying. Now, I have another chart uh, uh, that I want to show you, but let me let me take a quick sip here. Let me see if I can find his chart. Uh Again, we're in the premium section, so you're going to have to... Uh, you know what? I'll throw it in there. I'll throw that chart in there. All right. Um, Vince, it's 736, 756. Here's your daily chart. Gold's down 12 bucks and change. Look, there's no one who wants to sell gold right now. Get short gold. There are only people who want to uh, take profits. Commitment to trader report. Uh, we looked at this weekend. Confirmed it that the... Well, here's a new thesis for you. The gold bullion banks are no longer short gamma, but the hedge funds and the big speculators are long gamma. Who did they buy the options from? More on that in a day or two when we flesh it out. I'm Vince. Have a great day. Thanks for watching this morning's Markets and Metals with Vince Lancey, brought to you each day by Miles Franklin Precious Metals, who we encourage you to contact for your next gold or silver order. And Miles Franklin brings us a gold and silver special each week. And if you've been looking for a pullback in the rally to purchase gold and silver, this week's deals include one ounce silver philharmonics from the Austrian men in Austria, go figure. Fortunately, these beautiful coins are only $3.10 over spot. Well, we still do have silver under the $30 level, which it obviously eclipsed earlier this year. And on the gold side, this week's special is one ounce gold Kurans for only $60 over spot. And again, you can place an order by calling 833-326-4653 or emailing us at arcadia at milesfranklin.com. Happy to answer any questions you have and get you set up with whatever you need. So call us at 833-326-4653. And as always, thanks for watching. Please note that this video is not intended as legal licensed financial trading advice and is to be used for informational purposes only. Please contact your financial advisor before making any decisions. And thanks for watching.